So Arsenal have seen the lead slip in the last 10 minutes here at the Emirates Stadium. They've gone down two goals to one against Chelsea. Chelsea scoring twice in the last 10 minutes to spoil the first day in charge at home for Mikel Arteta. Gary, let's talk about Arsenal. It was, a, it was an interesting game pretty much from the start from an Arsenal point of view because they did look like they had made changes there was a change in their attitude there was yeah. a change in their setup and it was all going so well for them it really was and but for a goalkeeping error right at the end I think they would have seen that game out and it would have been a massive boost not only for Arteta as a manager in his first home game but for the players more than anything because there was a real connection again with the supporters who reacted so positively to what they were seeing the organisation how they frustrated a really talented Chelsea team I know Chelsea is struggling of late but they negated all their strengths. It was very difficult to play through. The likes of Ozil, who's often criticised in terms of what he does without the ball, was very impressive. But he wasn't alone. From back to front, they were so good. To the extent that Chelsea had to really rip up their whole game plan, make an early substitution, bring Jorginho on to try and give him a foothold, to try and get someone who could get on the ball and make passes because they couldn't do it up against a, such a good defensive structure of Arsenal. But as we keep saying... This was never something that was going to be corrected overnight. Arteta says this will take time. But the frustration will be that Arsenal imploded again to throw away what should have been a really, really encouraging home win. Yeah, the Burnt Leno mistake. Yeah. Did you see a goal coming? Were no, it not for that? No. You, did you, were you confident Arsenal would see it through? I, I felt that Chelsea were struggling. I really felt that they were just going up dead ends. They weren't going to do it. I'm never confident in this Arsenal team in terms of seeing a game out because I don't believe they have that ability. The closer that Arsenal team and defensive unit gets to their own box, I worry because I think there's going to be rash decisions, rash challenges. They'll give penalty away, something like that. So I felt that Chelsea would knock on the door and try and do it that way. But it was comfortable. There was no real pressure. The goalkeeper wasn't having to make saves. Chelsea weren't creating any chances. And a basic floating ball into the box which was going to go harmlessly into the goalkeeper's hands I don't know why attempt to punch it and not just collect it and catch it I know we see this a lot with the foreign goalkeepers the, the, the reluctance to catch it the preference to punch it but he totally misses it and Jorginho scores a goal and I just felt from that moment on the disappointment was so great that I felt Chelsea would get the goal having said that it was Arsenal were chasing and in doing so, left themselves open for the first time in a game in terms of playing into Chelsea's hands, in terms of how good they are countering at pace from back to front. And they put them to the sword and got the winning goal. Yeah, we'll get onto Chelsea in a little more detail, but just focusing on Arsenal for the moment yeah. and what Mikel Arteta might need to do in January. Bert Leno has made seven mistakes that have led to goals since the start of last season. Wow. They finished the game at centre-half with Scott Mustafi and David Luiz. There's no future in that, quite obviously. He needs to invest a lot of money, obviously, which A, I'm not sure is there, yeah. and B, I'm not sure January is the time to do it. No, it isn't, because I think you need to, 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 to get players in who are going to make a massive difference to this team. I don't think, I don't think you have to go and get world beaters as such. I think a solid centre-half, solid midfielder would make the world of difference. But you're right, I don't think the finances will be there. I think the reason why Arteta has been given the job is because of his skill set of coaching. And he'll be encouraged now to bring these young players through. And we saw a couple of young players coming in today. Now, whether or not they're good enough to get Arsenal back amongst the elite in the Premier League remains to be seen. They are alternative players, of course they are. But it's a big rebuilding job. And Arteta said it won't be one that's done overnight. The only we, we saw Callum Chambers yeah, limped off a, with injury. Rob Holding, there's potential in him yeah. as well. And he's slowly making his way back. Kolasinac is out, Tierney is out, Bayerin is out. Yeah. Yeah. There are other guys in and around the squad potentially when they're fit that may well do a better job than what's in there right now. I definitely feel that Arsenal think a lot of holding. I know that he had a difficult baptism, especially playing centre-half that opening game a couple of seasons ago against Liverpool. Him and Chambers put to the sword by Liverpool. They were destroyed. But he's come back and I think he's a reliable centre-half. And with games, you hope that he'll improve. But you're right, I think Mustaf Mustafi's future is not at Arsenal. It shouldn't be. He's had his chance. And at times you have to literally say, well, listen, enough's enough. Likewise, Xhaka wasn't playing today. And I think to get the mood right in that dressing room, I think you probably have to get rid of those guys who are synonymous with failure at Arsenal, really, in terms of the high standards that are set at this club. So I think he'll have to do that. But I think ultimately, looking at that game, the disappointment will be great. But I think he'll look at it and think, do you know what, for 80 minutes, bearing in mind, this is Chelsea, I know they're struggling. I think he'd have been really impressed with how difficult they made it for the opposition and it gives him something to build on. And you can imagine what the post-match atmosphere would have been like if they'd beaten Chelsea 1-0, kept a clean sheet, ground out the victory, picked up four points from could, six. We could sense it from the supporters in and around us. They were really buying into it and they were energised by what they were seeing. 
And this is not um, an Arsenal support who wanted to see flicks round corners, showboating. They just want to see a team that's organised and works its socks off. And you have to say, throughout that game, even late on when they're chasing the equaliser, they did exactly that. Whether or not they can maintain that remains to be seen. Whether or not they revert to tight remains to be seen. But I would be happy with that first showing under um, Arteta in his first home game. How much can they get out of the guys they have outside of the back four? Torreira and Guendouzi started midfield today. Are, is Lacazette the answer up front? Is it wholesale surgery that's acquired on this squad, be it from the academy players to come back to fitness and, and the, the transfer market? Or can Mikel Arteta make vast improvements by what he's already got here? I think he can make vast improvements in terms of coaching them, but it's whether or not they're prepared to do that consistently. Because I initially thought that Emery had made improvements when he first came in. There was an accountability in terms of players responsible for their performances. If they didn't play well, they were dropped. But slowly but surely, he was engulfed by them and he, they got the better of him in the end, the players, because he ended up getting sacked. I don't think there'll be wholesale changes because I don't think they had the financial muscle to do that. If you could, that would be brilliant, but it wouldn't be the case. And I think you're right. I think slowly but surely, just get a couple of players out, get the squad re-energised by good characters into that change room, leaders, not just necessarily in terms of shouting and cheerleading on the pitch, but leaders in the change room and, and getting these players to, to conduct themselves in the right way to be challenging at the top to make the best of their ability because they obviously have ability otherwise they wouldn't be at Arsenal but I do look at the scenarios in terms of Lacazette I think he puts a real shift in I think the problem you'll have with Lacazette and Aubameyang who's a, who's a superstar at Arsenal lucky to have him is that their contract situations they need to be renewed whether or not you can entice them to stay remains to be seen Ozil he got a tune out of him you would hope that Ozil has a respect to Arteta as a former teammate and will consistently do that but if Ozil believes that the team will be built around him then I'm sure he will put the shift in and I was impressed with his performance today what was noticeable is that at 1-0 up in trying to see out the result, he makes a decision to take Ozil off the pitch to put a more defensive-minded player on. He did that, and as a result, Arsenal lost a bit of momentum, didn't have somebody who could get on the ball, and they lost the game. So, as a young manager, he may have to look at himself as well. Before we get your thoughts on Chelsea, the buzzword in the programme notes of Mikel Arteta today was energy. Yeah. He wanted energy around the stadium, wanted it from his players, the coach and staff, from the crowd. All those parties produced the energy he was looking for. We know Arsenal are in your heart. Are you fearful that today will really knock them back in terms of that early day bounce from the new manager and that it may not be here when Manchester United visit oh, no, on I, tonight? I, I know what you're saying and I can understand that and I think the disappointment will be massive because they'll probably look around at themselves and, and say, well, listen, how much better can we play without the ball? I'm not sure they can play much better than that without the ball. It was that impressive. But I think the manager was just saying to him, listen, but for a horror mistake, and that goalkeeper's not going to make that mistake again. I know you, you've referenced it. He has made a lot of mistakes, but I'll give some context to, to that to say, listen, he hasn't got a reliable back four. He normally got a team that just plays off the cuff and are so open. So with a defensive team that's organised, he should be better. And that's why it's frustrating that he made a mistake on the back of what was a really good performance by the outfield players. But I think they'll take the positives out of it. And I, and I don't think that will be just spin. I would genuinely, if I was sitting in there now as an Arsenal player, I'd be thinking, yeah, we did play well. I'm, I'll, I'll be gutted we'd lost, but I'd be thinking, yeah, that shows we are capable of it. Whether or not they consistently do it again, that remains to be seen. Well, that game with Manchester United is live and off the ball yeah. and went tonight. You're here with Stephen Doyle for full live and uninterrupted commentary. Having seen United get those wins over Newcastle and go away to Burnley and win, how do you see that going away tonight? Because it's going to be a really interesting one. And I've seen them at Watford as well. <laughs> yes. So let's give it some context here. I don't get sucked in by United's good performances. And if you think about that win against Newcastle, Newcastle imploded. De Bravo gets beat on his near post by a shot he shouldn't be. They get caught passing out from the back. So they give United the goals. And if you give United goals, you're never going to catch them up. So I agree with you. The clean sheet at Burnley, that was impressive. That was a standout performance, bearing in mind they've had so few of them. But I'm really looking forward to that game. I think it'll be brilliant to watch. I think as Chelsea like to play in space and show their athleticism, so do Manchester United. They're a counter-attacking team to the extent where they're ultimately can be accused of being a one-trick pony. So it'd be fascinating that game now to see whether or not Arteta is able to get another good defensive structure like he showed today to negate Chelsea's threat, whether or not he can do that against Manchester United. I'm really looking forward to that game. I, I'm really excited about that. And so before we leave you, on Chelsea, 
with seven minutes left in this game, Frank Lampard is staring in the barrel of his yeah. fifth defeat in seven Premier League games. The likes of Manchester United, Wolves, Sheffield United clambering all over Chelsea in terms of the race for that four Champions League place. What a different seven minutes makes. Amazing, really. It really is. And I, I genuinely believe he would have felt he got out of jail because he threw everything at it. He had to rip up the game plan initially to get Jorginho on the pitch because Arsenal were negating all their threat in terms of trying to play through midfield. And it, it felt like Chelsea in the home games what I've seen against West Ham against Southampton and against Bournemouth where they've lost where the opposition have defended deep not allowed them any space in behind blocked them out in midfield and Chelsea just don't have the ability in a way that isn't he then Hazard used to do so well for him. And Pretty much the same problem United have been facing over the last few months. Yeah, but I would argue, no, I would argue though that Mason Mount is better than Lingard and William is better than some of the creative players that, that United have. They have the creative players. That's why I don't understand it. Pulisic as well. So that's why it doesn't make sense. Pedro, those type of guys. So that would be the concern is that Chelsea do have the players to do it, but they're not doing it. So that is why Chelsea and, and notably Frank Lampard will probably look at those players and say, well, listen, I'm giving you the opportunity. You're good enough. But you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not producing. So he may well be saying to them or threatening them now. Listen, if you don't start doing it, then I might have to do some business in January. Because bearing in mind, they sold 224 million in the summer. They didn't spend anything themselves. So there will be money there. Probably not the money that could compete with the likes of City and United. But still, there will be investment. So. I think they'll be absolutely buzzing. You could see the reaction. Those Chelsea fans were, were so quiet. I didn't even hear them for the majority of that game. But I could certainly hear them at the end. And Chelsea fans were delighted. Frank went over there with all these players and they were hugging each other's high fiving him. But he's no fool, Frank Lampard. He will know they've got out of jail there. And he'll know, again, on the back of that, that, that poor form that they've been in, that that's not good enough. It's just not good enough for the quality players they have. Can you see them pushing on now and... And do you fancy them to occupy one of those four slots come the end of the season? Well, initially, the starter in start, I thought they would struggle. But I, I've always recognised that these young players that they've got and they're given their opportunities are, are very good, talented players. Then they went on a brilliant run September, October. But this run that you said, now, nah, I, I just can't emphasise just how big that win is for them today. Because if that had suddenly gone into those stats that you're saying, so many defeats for a team like Chelsea, they're, just, they're the type of results that a team's struggling at the bottom of the league, not, not a team like Chelsea, no matter how many young players are getting their opportunity. So I think for that, the confidence would have been shot. So that is a massive boost for them, it really is. OK, well, there you go. Chelsea have come from behind to beat Arsenal by two goals to one. A huge win for them. Desperate day again for Arsenal. We're just six points off the bottom three.